Hi friends, and today is gonna be the TBR takedown for the month of July. If you are new here, the TBR takedown is a game that I've been playing trying to get my physical unread TBR shelf down from a really high number down to something more manageable, probably around 50. I started off the month of July with 120 books. We'll put that on the screen for you. And we're gonna go through the books I hauled, the books I read, and then any DF, DFs, DNFs, or unhauls. For the rest of this year, I have been, for the beginning of this year, for the previous months, however you want to say that. I have been filming my takedown and my wrap up in the same video, but I actually have so many books we're going to talk about today. We're going to do the wrap up in a separate video, which I haven't done yet in 2022. So um, we have a lot of books to talk about today, like a shit ton. And so let's just get to it. So we are going to start with our haul. Little notes. When I haul these books, some of them have already been read, so they don't get to go against my unread TBR because they're already read, even though I bought them after I read them. And also our first book will not count because it is a craft book, and that is Romancing the Beat by Gwen Hayes. Um, this is just a writing craft book that has information on writing your typical romance. Uh, my friend Kate Cavanaugh did a video on this book earlier this month. I'll link it down below that I really enjoyed so I wanted to pick up a copy of this for myself. I haven't started writing any romances but I have some in my brain so I want to like have this for me for the future. And then we have two more books that don't count and that is Heartstopper Volume 3 and Volume 4. We talked about these last month because I hauled Volumes 1 and 2 last month and I read all four volumes last month. I watched the Netflix show on Friday, today's Monday. Um, so I actually sat and binge watched the whole thing. It was fantastic. I want to watch it again. I want to read these again. I don't know why I love these so much, but I absolutely love these so much. Also a book that we talked about last month and also that doesn't count is Strange and Ever After by Susan Dennard. I was waiting on this one to come in the mail. I ordered it secondhand. This is the final book in the Something Strange and Deadly series by Susan Dennard. Um, and I ordered these hardbacks that are hard to find. Um, like I said, I got them secondhand. So this guy came in. And our final book that doesn't count is going on to my TBR is my favorite book of all time. And that is a semi-definitive list of Worst Nightmares by Crystal Sutherland. I'm going to show her to you because she is beauty. She is grace. She is gorgeous. So this is like I said, my all-time favorite book. I love this book. I have an entire review video for it. Um, I will link it down below. I'll actually link you the one that I reposted this month. I did a repost of this book this month, A, because I needed a video and I wanted to appease the algorithm gods while I was on vacation, but also because this cover is a new cover and it is a million times better than the old cover for this book. Um, it's right here. So this is our old cover and this is the new cover. And as I said, my favorite book of all time now has a badass cover. So I am very excited to have this and super stoked to like put this on my shelf somewhere where we can look at it all the time together, me and you. I then got a book of the month box. Let's start with those. Also, am I telling you what these are about? No, because I don't know because I haven't read them. I mean, I have read those ones, but uh, The House Across the Lake by Riley Sager. I know that this is about a lady on a cabin who's watching her neighbors across the lake through binoculars. She sees something happen. Dun dun dun. I then picked up the Book of Cold Cases by Simone St. James. Um, I'll just give you the little blurb here. A true crime blogger gets more than she bargained for while interviewing the woman acquitted of two cold case slayings in this chilling new novel from the best-selling author of The Sundown Motel. Uh, basically there was a lady who was tried for two murders she was acquitted she becomes like this recluse this lady has a true crime blog podcast probably i don't know she's a true crime thing and she wants to interview this lady and she convinces the lady to let her interview her and it's a whole thing i then got firstborn by will dean this book follows a pair of twins um, they live, one I think it lives in New York and the other lives in England and the twin who lives in New York dies and the twin from England has to go to New York and figure out like what's going on, um, how she died and like 
all of the secrets and all the drama. Basically I had to pick a book for the month the, to get my other books and so this was the book I picked for the month so that I could get my other books. I also got a new release which is Young Blood by Sasha Lawrence. I read Sasha's debut last year and absolutely loved it. This is sapphic vampires at like a boarding school. So you know I'm here for it. I am about 40% through this right now and I am having a fantastic time. Next we're going to go over the books that I read. Uh, even if a book doesn't count as having come off of my physical TBR, I will mention it um, because if I don't then you guys ask me, you read this book, why didn't you talk about it when you were doing your TBR takedown? Just makes things cleaner for everybody involved. Again, we're not going to do a wrap up this month. The wrap up will be its own separate video, um, which should already be up actually. So you should be able to see. Wrap up goes up first. Yeah, wrap up goes, it's been so long since I've done both. I can't remember what order I normally do it in. Wrap up should be up already. So I will link that in the description box down, for, down below for you as well. English is not my favorite subject currently, apparently. Uh, anyway, I read Delilah Green Doesn't Care by Ashley Herring Blake, The House Sitter by Ellery Kane, The Garden of Small Beginnings by Abby Waxman, The Dead Romantics by Ashley Poston, The Last Legacy by Adrienne Young, Well Matched by Jen DeLuca, Stay Awake by Megan Golden, Something Wicked by Ellen O, which is the Spirit Hunters book three, a book we just seen, The House Across the Lake by Riley Sager, and A Flicker in the Dark by Stacey Willingham. Okay, are you with me? You're with me. All right. Uh, I did a thing this month. The video is already up for part of it. I did a 10 book try a chapter. Some I read more than a chapter, some I didn't even read a full chapter. Basically I went through 10 books, tried a chapter or two, decided if it was something that I wanted to read. I have a lot of books on my shelves that I purchased like 2017 or earlier and I'm just trying to clear the clutter of books that I'm not into anymore. My reading taste has definitely changed over time. So Ashley if you're out there and you haven't got these yet, here's a list of all the books you'll be getting. Uh, Ashley is my cousin who I pass my books off to and then let her do with as she will, whether she wants to read them or donate them to the library. The first six we're going to go through are from the try chapter. So if you want to know more about like why I chose to get rid of them, you can find my thoughts there. I'll link that video down below. I have Furthermore by Tahita Mafi, Heirs of Fate by Amara Luciano, Under the Never Sky by Veronica Rossi, My Heart and Other Black Holes by Jasmine Warga, The Ones We're Meant to Find by Joan Heen, and Heartless by Marissa Meyer. I also have two books that I attempted to read and then DNF'd this month which are chosen by Kirsten White. This is the second book in the like Slayer series that she was doing. I don't know. And Firekeeper's Daughter by Adrian Bully. We have more. I then was like, you know what? There's more books. I'm looking at more books and there's more that I just want to get rid of. There's more that I just want to get rid of. Uh, some of these I read the first few chapters of and some I didn't. Um, so we'll talk about that. One I did not read the first chapter of and just decided to go was in Some Other Life by Jessica Brody. It's YA. It's about making the wrong choice about what school to go to. So we're getting like two alternate universe timeline things and it's just not what I'm into anymore. So then I have For the Record by Charlotte Wong. Uh, this one's about a girl who like won a or lost a talent show. Did she win or lose? She lost a TV talent show, went back to her quiet life, then was asked to join this new band. And like the first couple of chapters were just, it's not what I wanted to read. I don't want to read YA kids being famous, like on tour. It's not my jam. The Valiant by Leslie Livingston. Read the first couple of chapters of this. Again, not really living with YA anymore. I mean, I am. I'm much more picky about my YA now than what I was in 2017. Okay. To Kill a Kingdom by Alexandra Cristo. Again. YA didn't read like it was something I would enjoy. My Lady Jane, um, which has multiple authors, Cynthia Ann, Brody Ashton, and Jody Meadows. I read the first few pages of this and I know it's supposed to be like a farce on history, like it's supposed to be a retelling of history, but I ha- I, so it, it's a me thing. It's like the very first few chapters there is um, a character who is the daughter of King Henry VIII. It is uh, Mary and Mary is like one of the most vile repulsive women leaders in history um, and she was like this sympathetic like very loving older sister to her brother in this book and I was just like oh I can't I can't I can't do it I can't I can't do it so uh, that one gone uh, and then the other two I didn't try to read at all 
uh, The Thousandth Floor, and Long May She Rain. These are like standard YA from that time period. Again, being more choosy about the YA that I do pick up. These don't really sound like anything that I'd be interested in now, so they can go to a better home. There was another book that I DNF this month that I do want to talk about it a little bit, and that is Witches Steeped in Gold by Shannon Smart. So this book is like rated ridiculously low on Goodreads. And I think a large part of that, or maybe not a large part, but a part of that is just that it is a diverse author. It is an author of color. And I think that authors of color on Goodreads tend to get lower reviews than what their white peers do. And that's an issue. Um, a lot of times it'll just be like, well, I don't under, you know, us white people will be like, well, I don't understand. And it's because we're reading about a culture that isn't like our culture. And so they just give up, which I hate because I love learning about new cultures. And I love like getting a book where I get immersed into this other culture, whether it's a fantasy culture or a culture of another race or religion or region of the planet that we live on. I, I like culture. I like learning about those things. So I was really excited to read this because I had heard that it had a lot of Jamaican culture in it. My issue with this book is that the way that the culture is shared in the narrative, it is very clunky and I had to stop reading every couple of sentences to look up words. And that is like, a, that's a me thing. Like they're like, I feel like this author was too smart for me and just like her vocabulary is much larger than mine. And so she knows a lot of words that I don't know. And I spent a lot of time looking things up. And I think that because this is marketed as YA, that's probably a large problem with this book. Um, again, not a large problem, but a problem. I always say a large problem, but it's probably not a large problem. It's probably just a problem. But having to stop every few sentences and look up a word made it feel very clunky and made it more difficult to read. And so I read about the first 5% of it and then was just like, I'm not going to make it through this. I'm remembering nothing that I read because every couple sentences I have to stop, pull up the dictionary on my computer, look up a word, see what it means, put it back into the context of the sentence and then read the sentence again and it just was not going well for me. I just wanted to go through that because I know especially with this book in particular um, because it is rated so lowly on Goodreads a lot of people have said like they think that it is in large part because this is a author of color and I think that probably does play into it but I also think that for me in particular it's just because it wasn't as easy to read as I would have liked it to have been. Some people have loved this book some people have not. I didn't give it the chance that a lot of other people would and a lot of large part of that is because I'm trying to get rid of things that I just don't think are for me. So it's a whole thing but I just wanted to have a little conversation about it. Okay so those were the books I read, the books I hauled, the books I unhauled. Um, we started out with 120 books. We hauled four books that count. We read three books that count. Uh, we DNF'd slash unhauled 16 books that count as coming off of our physical TBR and therefore we are left at the end of the month with 105 books on our physical unread TBR shelf. I cannot wait until this is down into double digits. I'm really trying to push for reading like my spooky books that are on my shelves and really trying to push like the second half of the year. I have a lot of arcs to read, don't get me wrong, your girl still got a poop ton of arcs, a literal poop ton, a boat ton, if you will, of arcs to read. And so, yes, I will still be doing that, but I have a lot of physical books that I plan to read and I'm very excited to get to because I want to get to them before they've sat here for five years. And I'm like, well, I don't know that I want to read these anymore. Also, a lot of these that I bought bear in mind I bought um, like at discount stores and things where I was like oh it's cheap I'll buy it I might like it. That's it for me today. I post reading writing book and planner related videos a couple of times a week if you don't want to miss anything I have going on in the future make sure you hit the subscribe button and the notification bell down below and until then I will see you guys next time. Bye!